Good day, this is Jim Pytel from Columbia Gorge Community College Renewable Energy Technology Program. This is EET 122, Digital 2. Today we're going to discuss ring and twisted ring counters. But before we do that, um, I've got an addendum to the 74194. Uh, remember how uh, this is our 4-bit bidirectional universal shift register. And the fact that it's universal, it's parallel in, serial in, parallel out, serial out. Um, so we would normally expect a shift load command. We would also expect a right left command, but we don't have those. We have S0 and S1. And remember when I said when they're both one, that's a load. When it's one zero, that's a right. Let me make sure I'm correct. Yeah, zero one, that's our left. What's that guy right there? I neglected to tell you about that. That's basically an inhibit. Inhibit. Uh, basically, don't do anything. Um, everybody stay where you're at. Um, figuring it out, bear with me. All of a sudden, bang, goes back to load and loads a new one or right or left, whatever it is. So I forgot to give you guys that zero, zero command, inhibit. Uh, what are we talking about? Okay, yeah, we're talking about ring and twisted ring counters or Johnson counters. A twisted ring is also called a Johnson counter. So um, we have up to this point discussed, uh, remember how I said uh, capacity and capability? Capability, what can you do with it? Um, you can shift it left, you can shift it right. We've, we've exhausted left and right, but we have forgot to talk about one of the other capabilities, and that's rotate. And that what a, that's what a ring counter does, is basically it's taking something from the output and feeding it back to the input. So let's go ahead and draw DQ. Let's do a 3-bit. So this is our in. Previous stages Q is fed to the next stages D. Previous stages Q is fed to the next stages D. And now, what's happening here? It's going like that. Okay, so this is one of those you could easily get involved with a which came first, the chicken or the egg problem. So how you solve that is that guy right there. It's the preset. OK, so this one flip flop right here, let's say um, it's just given an active low zero and it's preloading a one right there on it. And now the clock starts. Clock starts basically this guy on this first stage is passed on to the next one. And we're left with one. So zero, one, zero. The other ones were, by the way, were zeros. So let's go ahead and do that again. So we're starting off like that. Clock pulse comes along. This one is passed to this one. That zero is sent over here. Next clock pulse comes along. Next clock pulse comes along. That one is going this way. So what's going on? It's a ring. It's basically that one is constantly looping through there. And what you get is you could basically make kind of a counter here in this Q0, Q1, Q2. Here's our clock pulse. Basically, next clock pulse. Next clock pulse. Basically, what you're getting is an active high indication of 
one and only one uh, of the outputs has a one on it. Next clock pulse. Okay. So how many different unique states do we have here? Well, in this case, there's three flip-flops, so there's three different unique states. Okay. If we were to extend this out to 10 flip-flops like this, here we go. Here's 10 flip-flops. We're going to feed the previous stage's Q to the next stage's D all the way through. At the very last one, in this particular case, stage 0, 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That guy is being fed back here. And then we started off with an active low preset. Everybody's got the same clock. And give this guy an active low preset, and this stage right here has a 1. Next clock pulse comes along, this guy's got it. Next clock pulse comes along, this guy's got it. Next one, this one. It's this game. Who's got the one? Next clock pulse, bang, right back there. Okay, so what you just created is a zero to nine counter in effect. Basically where the bit position is representative of the decimal number. Like this run right here, if that one's lit up, that's zero. If this guy has got a 1 here, that's representing 5. Okay, um, You could, if you wanted to, make um, something of some odd sequence by this preset. Let's say we do this. So now, who's got the 1s? This is the new game here. Next clock pulse comes along. It's these guys. Next one these guys. Okay? So you can make it of any sequence you want to. How many sequences are there in a regular old ring counter? Well, there's many sequence as there are um, bit positions. Okay? So now let's go on to a twisted ring counter. Uh, twisted ring is also referred to as a Johnson counter. So what you do with this one, just like a regular old ring counter, but the only difference is that connection right there. Okay? So what is that connection right there? Well, that's not Q. Okay? So rather than taking the not Q, hence the term twisted ring, your book, I think, introduces this one first. I have no idea why they do, but um, it's not like it's especially hard. But So that's not Q, not Okay, let's bring our analysis down to a smaller, more reasonable number of bit positions here. So this right here is a twisted ring Johnson Connor 3-bit implementation. A little bit easier to um, go through the analysis than a 10-bit one. Okay, secret of this guy, rather than our preset, our single preset, it's the multiple clear. So to start a twisted ring Johnson counter on the right track, we give everybody a clear, an active low clear. So everybody's at zero. Take it away and start our clock running. Okay? Oops, I am doing a four bit counter. This is going to get messy. How about that? Let's just do a four bit counter. Um, so we're starting out at zero. Next clock pulse comes along. Everybody's still going to get shifted right. So this is, how are we going to do this? Let's do Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3. That's a zero. What's being shifted into the Q0 position? not q3. q3 was a zero, so what's being shifted in? 
1. Okay? So now, do the same analysis for the next clock pulse. So that 1 is being shifted to Q1. A 0 is being shifted to Q2. 0 is being shifted to Q3. What's being shifted into Q0? Not Q3. It was a 0. So now it's a 1. Next clock pulse. Not Q3. It was a 0. So it's a 1. Next clock pulse. It was a 0. So now it's a 1. You filled it up. So you've gone from quadruple 0 to quadruple 1. Now this is what's cool about a Johnson counter. What happens the next clock pulse? This guy, well, let's do the, the ones we know. 1, 1. That's easy. That's easy. This guy is being fed to there, but it's the not implementation of it. 0. Not implementation of that, zero. The not of that. And finally, the not of that. So you're back to quadruple zero, and you're back to where you started. So this is a 4-bit representation of a twisted ring counter. How many states do we have? We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 states. Going from all the way full of zeros to all the way full of 1s, you know, going from a different direction. We're filling in the 1s first here, then filling in the zeros there. So we've got eight states. Basically, it's how many different states does a twisted ring counter have? As twice as many states as bit positions. So how many states does a three-bit uh, twisted ring counter have? It has six states. And that would be one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So um, I think you are actually going to be using a twisted ring counter in one of the labs. So we will wait to the lab to play with these things. And I think we're next moving on to just uh, shift register applications.